previously on the Blockbuster Buster. Because there is no way that the Napoli can come up with something worse than that. uncertainty, where movie theaters are plagued by remakes and sequels, in a world where big budget movies can still suck, in this world we have the Blockbuster Buster. out on busting these horrible movies. At least until I know that Nerdlinger is safe. <sighs> Greetings fanboys and fangirls, I'm Erod and I'm the Blockbuster Buster. And I HATE Scooby-Doo! The nostalgia critic talks about the Flintstones being bad, and while I do not care to dispute the quality of that show, at least the Flintstones had different fucking plot lines. Scooby-Doo was the same shit in every episode. A bunch of dumbass stoners allegedly solving ghost-themed mysteries, which all conclude with the unmasking of a ghost, only to reveal that it was just a guy. It's repetitive idiocy at its worst. WTF, mofo. And yes, I know that they were variations to the show, like the 13 ghosts of Scooby-Doo. But the characters were still lame, and not even Vincent Price with all of his collective awesomeness could make this great dame cool. I will admit that I did like a pup named Scooby-Doo, but mostly because it parodied its parent show. And come on, it was a mystery show that featured a character named Red Herring. Now that's hilarious! And lastly, Scooby-Doo was simply created to quell the complaints of parent watch groups that were bitching about the cartoons of the 60s being way too violent. So yes, Scooby-Doo was created to replace Johnny Quest, Space Ghost, and the Herculoids. Try to digest that for five seconds. Now one could argue that I should be grateful that Scooby-Doo kept Hanna-Barbera alive through the 60s, you know, the ends justify the means, but I still don't understand how this horrible show has such amazing longevity. With spin-offs, movies, directed DVD releases, and even revamps. Alright, I might as well just treat this like a band-aid and rip it off as quickly as possible. So our movie begins with the same tired old bullshit. The Scooby Gang is at a haunted toy factory. Daphne got captured at record time. Velma has a plan and... Linda Cardellini? Freddie Prince Jr.? Matthew Lillard? Those are some pretty solid young actors. But you know what? I can't blame them for being in this. After all, they were up-and-comers at the time, and this was a high-profile blockbuster movie. So it was good exposure for them. Now let's see what brainless bimbo they got to play Daphne. can go crazy over these two lame assholes, then there is no reason why I can go crazy over somebody who's actually cool. So as I said earlier, same old, same old. Shaggy and Scooby screw up Velma's plan, but magically capture the ghost anyway. And what the hell kind of a toy factory is this? Who built this, the good guy corporation? Go ahead and unmask the ghost. The Luna Ghost is in fact Everybody say it together. Oh, oh man, Smithers! How is the ghost able to fly? Explain it, Velma. Watch. These balloons fill with a highly potent helium synthesis. 
giving the Luna Ghost his weightless appearance. See what I mean? Same old predictable Pamela Anderson. What? I guess they're referencing the era of Scooby-Doo where they had a lot of celebrities guest star, like Phyllis Diller, Don Knotts, and the Harlem Globetrotters. You know, talented celebrities. I do not always get kidnapped. Can't believe you'd say that to me. Oh, please. You come with your own ransom note. <laughs> hey, my glasses! Hmm? Who's helpless now? I'm going to kill you, Daphne! Whoa, whoa! Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe I quit. I do. Yeah, I quit. I'm out of here. Good riddance. Don't, no. Don't go. Come on, you guys. Don't do this. Nope. I'm not going to get excited over this development. Uh-uh. You know they're going to get right back together before the climax of the movie. So let's just cut to two years later. And thus we find the mystery machine parked by the beach, with some questionable smoke pouring out from the inside. Oh, I know exactly what's going on inside that party wagon. I'm just kidding, they're just making hamburgers. When suddenly Shaggy and Scooby get invitations to, I kid you not, Spooky Island where billionaire Anton Monteverius will pay them a handsome wage to solve a mystery. Yeah, it's just materialism's not really our bag, man. Offer them food. To provide you with free airfare? No thanks. Offer them food. Human board? Uh, no thanks. Offer them food! And all you can eat. <laughs> all you can eat? Mm. There you go! Everybody knows that you build up the major munchies when you lock yourself inside a hippie van and smoke up some hamburgers. Yeah. So lo and behold, when Shaggy arrives at the airport, he finds that the rest of the gang received invitations to Spooky Island as well. Velma quickly deduces that this is all an elaborate trap, but they all agree to go anyway just to see who can solve the mystery first. I sense a lesson in teamwork in the future of this film. I guess we're like all going to Spooky Island, man. Hey, we're Scooby. Ah, oh, great. It's my favorite unfunny cliche. And let me guess, there are actually going to be characters in this movie that are going to be stupid enough to believe that the CG dog is actually a woman. Who's the ugly old bro? Oh, could somebody please? Thank you. Could somebody please give him a Scooby snack? Here you go. Right. I'm Mary Jane. Like that is my favorite name. Really? Oh, I know why that's his favorite name. It's because he's a huge Spider-Man fan. Right? So the Scooby gang arrives at Spooky Island and Rowan Atkinson. But, 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 but you're awesome. Pamela Anderson, she's a talentless tart, so I get it. But you? That's two of my idols that were somehow bamboozled into being in this movie. Rowan, you're one of the best! You're like a god in Britain! Oh, man. Well, at least say something funny. Catch our electrical torture parade! It's a dead world after all! And the world-famous Splatterhorn! Oh! Oh, I get it. They're parodies of the attractions at Disney World. I guess that would make the haunted house... the haunted house. Ah, forget it. So Montevarius explains to the gang that something is turning all the guests at his park into mindless zombies. Later that evening, after getting a clue from DJ from Street Fighter, Daphne decides to investigate the haunted house ride. And once again, everyone else got the same clue and arrived at the haunted house at the same time. Um, guys, I think it has become painfully obvious by this point to you, me, and everybody that somebody, who actually isn't me, wants all of you dead. So it might not be a very good idea to go inside the... Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> ah. Thank you. They're moving toward us. Whoa! We made it, Scoop! We're alive! <laughs> wow, 
that was pretty awesome. Implausible, but awesome. <laughs> a few more scenes like that and I might just be able to get through this. You're in trouble. Oh boy! Excuse me, do you mind not farting while I'm saving the world? They just farted on Sarah Michelle Gellar. There's some metaphor here somewhere, and yet, I can't help but wonder what the actual Shaggy and Scooby would think about this part of the performance. What kind of performance do you call that? You made me sound like a total space cadet, man! I'm sorry if you're the way I was just, I was trying to be real to your character. If you like goof on me in the sequel, <laughs> I'm coming after you! Yeah, and I'll give you a Scooby smile. For once, gentlemen, we are in agreement. Before taking a walk through Shaggy and Scooby's noxious fumes, Daphne managed to snatch some kind of a golden relic, which Vilma analyzes in the crowded hotel lobby. That's just dumb.